does is this deep feeling of wrongness, like the thoughts come into awareness and the emotions come strong, they're very intense, and you can just feel there's a temptation to conclude, I'm not getting this. I've been reading and talking to people and practicing spirituality and why am I not getting this? I'm wrong. There's a wrongness. It's not so much even a wrongness of the person, it's like a deep core wrongness, like feeling out of place, feeling really wrong. I'm so wrong, I don't fit in to this world, I, I feel wrong, wrong, wrong. It's a wrong feeling. And then when you go deeper uh, with our levels of mind, you start to see there's perceptions and then there's emotions, the, the wrongness feeling. Then underneath the feelings and emotions there's thoughts, and underneath the thoughts there's beliefs, and then right at the core of your mind is your desire, your point of prayer, point of power, where everything starts. So if your altar is, is defiled, you have a beautiful altar, power of prayer, but you've got the ego on your altar, then all those attack thoughts and fearful emotions and everything will just follow from having the ego on your altar. That's why, you know, the Bible even said, lay, have no gods or no idols before the Lord thy God. It's simply saying, that's another way of saying, clear your altar. Or Jesus saying, blessed are the pure of heart, for they shall see God. Pure. Yeah, he's saying the same thing. Purify the altar. Have nothing but God, nothing but love and peace and harmony and joy on the altar. So, one of the things that I'll introduce to you today, when you're watching your thoughts and you're going, hmm, not good, not good, not good, just consider for the moment that you are not the thinker of those thoughts. You see how that's going to start to free you. The judgment, oh, another judgment. Oh, another judgment. Starting to feel small. Jesus said, judge not. Look at it. Here, here I did it again. Did it again. You are not the thinker of those thoughts. It cannot be you who's thinking those thoughts. See how we're so identified with the body and so identified with the forms. Like when people say, how do you look like? And we say on the phone, well, I'm so and so years old, and I have this color hair, and this color eyes. There's an identification with the body, an identification behavior. But what if we're more identified than even with the body and the behavior, with the thoughts that we think we think? You know, it's that intimate. You know, we think, well, I'm, I am judging. But, is the I am that you really are really judging, or perhaps even that's a trick, that the majority of thoughts that you think you think every day aren't even really thought by you. They're, they're imposter thoughts. Your mind is filled with imposter thoughts, trying to convince you, the real you, the God-given you, the God-created you, that you're not you. You see how, how, how close that is? That you aren't even the thoughts that you think you think throughout the day. You can see where this is going. You're going to come into innocence if you start to watch them go by and go, Not me. That's not me. That's not me. Because your real thoughts are the thoughts you think with God, not these judgmental thoughts, not these opinions. Not these conclusions. So it's just a seed to plant in your mind. I am not the thinker of those thoughts. <coughs> and sometimes people will say, well, if I'm not the thinker of those thoughts, where are they coming from? <laughs> they're certainly there. <laughs> if I'm not the thinker, then where are they coming from? They don't have a source. They don't have a source. That's, that's why you can safely let them go. They don't really have a source. My mind is preoccupied with meaningless thoughts. <laughs> the reason they're meaningless is because they don't have a source. 
And, and you can start to see this as more of a fast track into your innocence. When you start to realize you aren't even those thoughts that you're watching come through awareness. Like passing clouds, Jesus says, sink down below them. Watch them like they're passing clouds in the workbook. He describes them as like a, a cloud bank. And then he has you go through them. He says, feel them on your cheeks. See, he's even using the body as a symbol. Because you're going to like pierce through these clouds of nothingness. Feel them on your cheek as you go through them. He's doing visual meditation, still using the body because the mind is identified with it. But just like your face pushing through these clouds. Oh, a little moisture on the cheeks, that's all. Come on, let's go through all the way. Let's go through to the light. You know, he, all these even visual imagery, he's using everything he can to take you past those associations in your mind. I, I've just said in the positive and negative, as well as the negative, that it's all a judgment. Yeah. That you're none of it. How glorious that you're none of it. You're not the positive thoughts or the negative. You're none of it. I couldn't, I couldn't um, understand it before, even when I was reading it in the book. I couldn't understand how um, being in, 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 in empathy with somebody or, or agreeing with somebody or thinking, oh yeah, that was, that was really, you know, good. I never thought that that was a judgment. But now, yeah. And that's, that insight is so huge because as soon as you have that insight, then there's there's such a relaxation that just washes over you. It's like you are off the hook for the negative ones and the positive. They're both where you go. You don't have to try to cling to some. So let's see how you could apply that. Now you move through your day seemingly, and now that that's your insight, that awareness is just for your mind. Not, not for anything else, just for your mind. And imagine going through the day and and we'll say having, I'll call them compliments and criticisms. Isn't that a common thing in, on planet Earth, moving through a day with compliments and criticisms? And just the awareness that they're both the same puts you back into a point of empowerment. That way somebody can say to you, oh, I, I like your dress, or nice, nice hair, oh, beautiful earrings, and everything. And you can watch that thought just as easily is when somebody says, you look tired today. Wow, you look like you got hit by a train. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it could, you see how empowering it is that the compliments can flow over you and off of you like water off of a duck's back. You can just smile. You don't have to correct them and say, no, actually, my hair isn't beautiful. <laughs> And, or, actually, I'm not tired. <laughs> I wasn't hit by a train. You know, you see how you don't have to <laughs> react and respond. Like, and what about you? You know, how when the mind gets into a defensive thing, like it wants to volley back, kind of a, a reply. Like, like a tennis match. Whack! Hit back. You don't, you can water off a duck's back. They can call you beautiful, they can call you wonderful, wise, and can give you all these compliments especially ones that really relate to the body. Because, because if, if they're complimenting your mind, and how clear you are, and how peaceful you are, and how happy, you can just say, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> but if they're complimenting the body, you know, water off the duck's back. You know, you're not interested in the positive comments about the body, or the negative comments. So it's like, let them roll by, like water off the duck's back. And then, it's your attitude from this empowering state of mind, where you don't buy the positive or the negative. That attitude teaches the whole universe what it is. You are the goal the world is searching for. Not you personality self, but you Christ are the goal the world is searching for. When I first read that in the Course, I was like, wow, Jesus is telling me, you are the goal the world is searching for. Mama and Daddy never told me that one. <laughs> Imagine that. 
in fourth grade, huh, you come here. You are the goal the world is searching for. We, we, this is a revelation that's coming to mind now. <coughs> Thank you for sharing that, because this, this is the gift that you have to offer. And again, that, come back to, makes... to the half of us being judged, you can say, oh, but I am not the thinker of those thoughts. You see, it's, it sends you back, back into the innocence again. That's what this is about, really coming deeper. Do you think God would have created us to be a judge? Do you think the God of oneness and love would say, I think I'll create a being. Let's see, let's make him a judge. Why would God create judgment? And, and what God creates is real and true, and anything else that is added on to that creation can't be real and can't be true, and definitely can't be who I am. See how, how that sends you back into innocence. Mm -hmm.